Hi folks, well it's Sunday the 21st of February 2016 and it's time for me to actually get started doing things in my greenhouse this year or soon. Anyway, I'll give you a quick tour of what's in here because it really won't take long and then we'll get some seedlings started. Let's go! Okay, so the young ones that I planted a while ago, after I sorted out that cycle timer, are coming along nicely. I think I counted 25 that have sprouted so far, 12 in that bed, and 13 over in this bed. But they seem quite happy. Um, On to the strawberries. Not looking amazing, but then I haven't actually changed their nutrients this year so far, I don't think. I think I did it sometime in December. Um, I did transplant a couple in from out of the garden to fill some empty spots. That one hasn't made it. The other one I think was this one next door to it and that one's doing fine. Uh, we've still got a few berries on them. Um, again, not looking amazing but there hasn't really been much sunshine yet and I have at least got some strawberries growing. And other than that, well, that's it for the greenhouse. Um, I've taken out the bottom NFT rail and I've got these lidded plastic tubs instead. These are 35 litre tubs. Um, I'm going to do DWC in these instead of the NFT rail, mainly because it lets me get the setup down lower to the floor, which gives me a bit more growing space. And they've got some um, room inside for big root balls. That's just a bunch of hose there. So I'm going to daisy chain all of them together, drop an air stone in each one, and uh, have, I don't know, something like eight in a row along that wall underneath where the strawberries sit. And uh, yeah, I haven't built that yet, don't need to for another few weeks yet because I haven't got any plants to go in there anyway. So let's go and plant some now. So, back inside my office I have rebuilt my little uh, misting chamber, growing chamber thing with the uh, amazing purple white of awesomeness. So, um, time to get some seeds on the go and I've got two helpers for this today. So, the first thing we're going to do is get some water in this and see at what level we start misting things. So, rather amazingly, this mister that I bought last year actually survived a whole year. So I've uh, cleaned it up. It was covered in, um, what's the word I'm after here? Limescale. It was totally covered in limescale. But I've cleaned it up in my ultrasonic cleaner and it looks as good as new. And it, st it seems to still work. So I'm going to plug that in and then my son is going to be in control of the hose pipe. We'll just leave that there for a while and see how much mist we get. Hopefully it'll fill up the whole container. It's quite hard to tell until you go. So, no, we're going to add some rhizotonic. Can you remember what rhizotonic does? It drains down the dead roots in a plant. Yeah, that one's canazyme that changes the dead roots into food. Rhizotonic does something else for the roots. Does it, it help it grow? Yeah, it helps it grow roots. And I think we want five millilitres of this per ten litres of water. So do you want to do five millilitres, Tom? So is that five millilitres? Well, what does it say? Yeah. And then quickly pour it and you have to pour it that way. Can I do the next one? You can, but don't stop. Did you do that? Yeah, you did, and you weren't supposed to. That's why I said, or you stop. Right, I'll give that a bit of a stir. Yeah. Mix it all in. Do you want to mix it? Yeah. Just stir it around. Make sure it's mixed all the way around. But it seems to have... It's quite thick. It's watery. Five millimetres already. So we've got the reading there. 
that should be about 0 0.4, 0 0.3 it says at the moment, that's alright, that's good. Okay, so next we're going to have some Aqua Vega A, yeah. and this is normally 25 millilitres per mm -hmm. 10 litres, but we don't want to give the seedlings strong nutrients. We want to give them very weak, because otherwise they don't grow roots properly, because they only grow roots to try and find the food, and if they can find food really easily, they don't bother to grow roots. So we're actually going to do just 10 millilitres of that, which is slightly less than half strength. Okay, so we have discussed it and we have reached a consensus. We're trying to plant larger plants in here that'll take longer to grow. Um, could you give us a rundown of what we've decided? So we would do California Wonder Peppers. How many? Three California Wonder Peppers. Two Sweet Aperitif Tomatoes. One Golden Berry, which tastes like pineapple. Um, Cucumber Telegraph Improved, Kelverden Wonder Peas, um, two Broccoli Samson F1, and two Cauliflower Cheesy F1. Excellent, thank you very much. First of all, we need to pour out roughly half of the clay balls into this tray. Our cucumber seeds, and we're going to put two in so just in case one of them doesn't grow, we can put another one in and hope that this one grows instead. So, this is what the cucumber seed looks like, and so we're going to plant it roughly in the middle so it's got room to grow. And now we're going to scoop up the rest of the clay balls and cover over the seeds so that it can have room so that it can go into it. And just so we remember what plant it is, we are going to write um, the name of the cucumber cucumber along this stick and we're going to do it from both sides just in case that we're looking at it from a different angle so we can read it both ways and are you going to eat them when they're ready yes okay the you want to put them in the middle of the pot? Yeah, so that's And then you can pour some out of there into there until it's full. Yeah, so that's full. Don't put it on the carpet. Two tables. <laughs> Not a bad job, it's just two tables on the carpet. Okay. Yeah. Are we just wrapping the outfit? And the label. So now it's cauliflower goes in. Because they're, well, cauliflowers. And it's on both sides. You can see it. On both sides. Okay. okay, now all the plants have been put in. The peppers, the tomatoes, the golden berry, the broccoli, the, the cucumber. Uh, the cauliflower, the cauliflower, and the pea. And now we're going to wait a few weeks before turning the light on because there's no point in turning the light on 
before the plants can even see it. So it's now six days after we planted these seedlings and uh, sorry about the poor lighting but just noticed in here I'm pointing at the right one there got a tomato sprouted and over there I've got my first cucumber coming up so I'm going to get the uh, pink light of bedazzlement on and we'll be growing. Hooray! 2016 started of course it would be easier to get the grow light going if I hadn't nicked one of the legs off my growing tent to support this monster roll of uh, white PLA filament. But that's a different story. Grow little seedlings. Grow. Grow. Reach for the light. Reach for the light. So, as my seedlings are sprouting now, I better get on and sort out my new DWC buckets. And, um, I just got a bunch of these general purpose adapter things from my like, one inch down to half inch. Um, I've cut the end off 14 of them because I've got enough space for seven of these buckets in here. And I just need to drill appropriate holes with a nice drill bit and um, daisy chain them all together with this three quarter inch hose. And then I'll fill them up with water and uh, pump some water around for a bit. So I've just done the one for now because I'm trying to work out the right height where I want this drain to be. Because this pot actually sits below the level. I think my drain might be just about the right height there. That's what I'm hoping for. Because there's this uh, moulding mark on each of these IKEA containers. And that's exactly where to put the drill bit. So. Um, Anyway, I'm going to fill that up with water, see when it overflows, hopefully it'll be at about the right level. Now, what I'm trying to achieve here is uh, by putting all the plumbing at the front of these buckets under the lift up flap on the lid, it makes it really easy for me to get to these ends if they get clogged with roots or anything. I can tidy them out without having to take the plant out of the bucket because I've got easy access to the front and I'm going to keep all the air hoses and everything else just on the front of these buckets and that way it's really easy for me to just open the lid, check the nutrients, take a look at the roots, unblock any clogs, anything like that, without having to disturb the plants too much. So um, I'm hoping this will be a big improvement. Um, while I'm here, yeah, NFT rails. Um, absolutely fantastic if you've got high density plants, but nothing but trouble if you're not really truly on top of the maintenance with them, I think. And since most of the time I'm only in here at weekends, problems happen, the roots get blocked, things get clogged up, things go nasty inside, and I'm not around to look at it. So um, I'm hoping by switching to these DWC buckets, at least for this lower rail, the fact I've got, I don't know, somewhere around about 25 litres of water, 20 litres of water for each plant means that when I'm not around to top up the nutrients, they've got a good reservoir that's going to keep them going through my uh, negligence. Um, yeah, lower down to the ground so it gives me more space to grow. Um, no growing media to worry about. I can just change the nutrients every few weeks. So um, yeah, hopefully we're gonna be good. And we're there, excellent. Let's just, because this is obviously gonna sit actually about half an inch below the lid there. So if we drop down about there, we're just nicely kind of half an inch above the level of the water, which I think is going to be pretty much perfect. So I'm going to drill the rest of these buckets now. And uh, oh good, I don't seem to have any drips either. Right, so I think I've finished drilling all my tank connectors in there. So uh, I've just temporarily got this one sat here because I need to make a bit more space underneath the bench there. But the water will start in there gets pumped along the black hose to the end one which will fill up and overflow overflow into each other all the way up to the end and then we overflow back to the reservoir tank at the end of it all so i'm going to put some water in that now um, check everything's at the same level which it probably isn't because i suspect this is all on a slope and uh, well see how we get on okay looks like we're getting up to a decent water level there i'm going to switch the pump on and uh, hopefully we should yeah, there we go. That's the 
I'm going to have to turn the pump off in a second because I suspect we're pumping faster than the hose can fill. In fact, I'm sure of it. So, bucket number one is now overflowing into bucket number two. This is going to get quite repetitive if I keep talking you through all of this. I'll just wait until it's all done. But we're getting there. Trickling through. Unfortunately the hose can't keep up, but yeah. Okay, so we seem to have a bit of a problem. It might not be the end of the world, but uh, this pump pushes so much water so quickly. This one fills up very fast over the overflow. That one's full over the overflow. That one's full. But by the time we get up to here, we've got very little water pressure. So if I just leave that big pump running, that one overflows. Um, I'm not sure it's going to be the end of the world. I'm going to keep mucking around and see what I can come up with. Well, I think we very clearly have a low point on this particular bucket here because we're going from this reservoir into the one in the corner and down to there backwards. But um, we're getting there. Right, anyway, I'm going to call it quits for this video because I think you've had enough of me rambling on. I'm not going to get these finished today, but I've got a few weeks to sort it out. But you know what I'm up to now anyway. So I um, hope everyone's having a good weekend and um, see you next time. Cheers, folks. Bye.